So now that the first half of 2022 has elapsed, the question is, how has the performance of my solar panels fared for the months of May and June this year? Crucially, what has changed since I made this video this time last year? In this video, I'm gonna be talking about the solar performance for these panels in May and June of this year. But I'm also gonna be talking about the financial performance as well for the whole of the first half of this year. Now, if you haven't watched my previous video, my name is Anthony and I own a nine kilowatt solar panel array up here in Aberdeenshire in Scotland. I've made many videos about these uh, solar panels in the past and I want to update you uh, about uh, the performance that we've got so far in 2022. So the headline figures. In May, we generated 995 kilowatt hours. That's considerably better than the 903 kilowatt hours we generated one year earlier. We were just shy of that one megawatt hour milestone. There's been a lot of bright weather with only two particularly dark days. Many of the remaining days were mixed affairs with a lot of cloudy weather, but also brighter interludes. June 2022 had exactly the same performance as the month, 1.12 megawatt hours of electricity. For the month, there were only two days that dipped below 20 kilowatt hours. But the best day was the 5th of June, where we generated 59.4 kilowatt hours. Now, I've never seen 60 kilowatt hours from these panels on one day. But on this day, I enjoyed almost unbroken sunshine. But overall, June has been quite a bright month with a regular mix of sunshine and cloud. Now, in terms of utilization, both months we exported over half of the electricity we generated. And 89% and 92% represent the amount of electricity consumed that came from our solar panels in May and June, respectively. So in terms of solar performance, there isn't too much difference between the first six months of 2022 and the first six months of last year. But in terms of financial performance, there have been some considerable changes since last year. Last year, I was getting paid five and a half pence per kilowatt hour for export of electricity. And also for most of the year, I didn't have my electric car. This year on the Octopus Agile tariff, we've returned just over 635 pounds worth of value in the first six months alone. And that means we are on track to return just over a thousand pounds worth of value for the whole of the year. Now, since the panels were energized in November, 2020, so far we've returned just over 1,330 pounds worth of value on our 11,000 pounds investment. So how does that 635 pound return break down? over the course of the first six months. Well, 265 pounds was saved against the Octopus Go daytime tariff. And that represents 877 kilowatt hours worth of self-consumption that wasn't diverted towards hot water. Now, in terms of hot water, we saved 19 pounds worth of LPG consumption that wasn't used for heating up my hot water tank. And that represents about 230 kilowatt hours worth of electricity. However, the big surprise is that only 49 pounds worth of electricity was saved against the five pence per kilowatt hour overnight electricity tariff that you get with Octopus Go. And that represents 980 kilowatt hours worth of electricity. So most of my electricity has gone towards my electric car in terms of self-consumption, but it represents the smallest amount of uh, savings uh, that we've had from the solar panels. Now, Octopus Go is the tariff that I would be on if I didn't have solar panels. So it's fair to compare my savings against the Octopus Go tariff. However, I'm on the Octopus Agile tariff, and as it is, the import prices are much higher at 35 pence per kilowatt hour compared to the 24.69 pence per kilowatt hour that I would have otherwise been on with Octopus Go. As a result, that change in tariff represents a cost of an extra £22.70 uh, for additional import costs on the Octopus Agile tariff compared to Octopus Go. So adding all of that up in terms of self-consumption savings, 
we've managed to save around £311. But in addition to that £311 worth of savings, we've also got the value of exports on the Octopus Agile tariff. Now, so far this year, these panels have returned over £343 worth of exports at an average export price of 17 pence per kilowatt hour. Now, that average export price is over three times the export price that we had on the fixed tariff that we had before I switched to Octopus Agile last year. So even with an electric car in the household, we're still exporting huge amounts of electricity. So it really goes to show that there's a lot of virtue in having a large oversized array on your household. You're not gonna get that extra electricity wasted in the summertime, and it really helps in the cloudy days and also in the winter time with uh, reducing your electricity bills. So all my savings were measured against the Octopus Go tariff at a price of 24.69 pence per kilowatt hour. Now that price was fixed until October of this year and that would have been the price I would have been on if I didn't switch to the Octopus Agile tariff back in February. Now at the time of filming, if I was wanting to go back to Octopus Go, I'd now be paying over 40.5 pence per kilowatt hour and I'll be paying 49.7 pence per day in terms of standing charges. So when you compare that against the Octopus Agile tariff, the maximum price we pay there at the moment is 35 pence per kilowatt hour with a 21 pence per day standing charge. So it's hugely advantageous for me right now to stay where I am until the mid-autumn time. So what's been going on with electricity prices in the last couple of months? Before we start with the dark cloud, I wanna talk about a couple of silver linings. Saturday the 11th of June was a remarkable day. We had a lot of gale force winds across the whole country. And this combined with uh, a lot of sunshine at the same time resulted in prices going negative for four hours in that afternoon. This was the first time that we saw negative prices since the beginning of 2022, where we saw negative prices for a few hours on a few nights. We also saw prices dip below 20 pence per kilowatt hour for large portions of uh, one week in May. And this also corresponded to a time where we had a lot of fresh wind plus a lot of solar power. So with lower consumption prices, we also got lower export prices. And when you had this combination of wind and solar, despite there being an abundance of electricity being generated from my own rooftop, I wasn't getting so much revenue. And the consequence was, was that I was actually getting more revenue in April uh, than I was in May for some weeks. Now, up until the middle of June, it was looking like this combination of wind plus solar could really peg down my prices. Then from mid-June onwards, the gas supply started to tighten up considerably. Supplies from Russia to Europe were suddenly reduced. This has resulted in forward contracts for electricity supplied next year suddenly shooting up. Wholesale spot prices are now routinely around the £200 per megawatt hour mark and forward prices into October this year are hitting £300 per megawatt hour. Even on certain days later in June, where solar plus wind results in very little gas being consumed, the prices didn't come down anymore. So we could be seeing retail prices of 60 pence per kilowatt hour becoming the norm by this time next year. I have to say, I was really shocked to see the Octopus Agile prices of 40 pence per kilowatt hour being quoted to me when I was researching my notes for this video. It's fair to say, coming into winter time, it's going to be pretty grim. And even with solar power, I'm not looking forward to the three darkest months of this uh, coming winter. So what can you do about it? Well, you can do what I did. You can install solar panels on your rooftop, but there's a problem. 20 months ago, these panels were about 80 pounds each. That's a 320 watt panel. Now you're paying about 167 pounds per panel. So it's over double the price, but the silver lining is, is that the output from these panels is about 400 watts. So a 25% increase. 
Now, my previous video on solar panel performance talked a lot about the supply shortages. And those supply shortages continue to this day. The solar supply chain still isn't anywhere near close to meeting demand for these solar panels. Polysilicon prices continue their upward march as mining capacity is unable to meet demand from solar wafer and solar module manufacturers. They, in turn, can't meet demand from solar wholesalers, and so on. However, to put things in context, polysilicon prices are around $37 per kilogram as of June this year. For historical context, polysilicon prices peaked in the year 2008 at around $460 per kilogram. This was a time when the market for polysilicon was expanding from only catering for silicon chip customers to one where the new solar industry demanded far more quantity. Since then, massive new investment has gone into polysilicon mining with the result that both price and mining efficiency have improved. So this is what an energy transition looks like. Suddenly, everybody wants to have solar power. It's not just geeks like myself. Now, the reason why everybody wants solar power all of a sudden is because the supply of conventional sources of energy, in particular gas and oil, have uh, suffered a massive supply shock. And when you combine that with the fact that wind and solar manufacturers can't ramp up their existing supplies to cover that new demand, you're going to have very turbulent periods in terms of uh, energy supply. Now, technology transitions, especially ones that involve huge amounts of capital, like energy, they're always very turbulent. So in a post-pandemic world, we've seen the prices of almost everything going up dramatically. But there is a silver lining. Do you remember that silicon chip shortage we had last year in 2021? Well, last year, if you look at graphics cards, for example, the price of graphics cards was astronomical and you could hardly get them. Now, the supplies of graphics cards have improved, but demand has also tumbled away. The price of cryptocurrency has gone down, which means uh, fewer graphics cards are needed for that. And the reason why cryptocurrency prices have gone down is because electricity prices have gone up. So not only has supply of graphics cards improved, but the prices have gone down dramatically. And we're likely to see that happen eventually, not this year, certainly not next year, with uh, renewable power. And then at the end of this transitional period, whenever that will be, maybe uh, five years time or so, um, we're going to see a period of uh, cheaper electricity prices and cheaper installation prices for, for solar panels. So the thing we can learn from all of this is that high prices can't sustain themselves for that long. Well, that's almost it for this video. But before I bow out, I want to present to you my new Solar Edge Energy Bank battery. Now, I had this battery mounted in May and it's now July. It's still not uh, fully commissioned. Uh, I am waiting some firmware for my inverter which can support this battery without voiding my warranty. Until that firmware is ready, uh, this battery is not wired up and operational. Now I was aware of this uh, before I took delivery and I accepted the delivery because the alternative was waiting until September for the next round of batteries to come along. But I'm hoping that uh, I'm going to have a much more in-depth video which looks at the installation and operation of this battery. And considering there aren't all that many videos, in fact, I don't think there are any uh, videos at all about the performance of this battery. So this video could well be the first ever video on the internet uh, that has some uh, detailed info about this battery. But in the meantime, I'd like to thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you again very soon.